Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to help you break down questions about androgen insensitivity syndrome because this topic is high yield. So let's get started. So this is exactly how questions like these would come. A 17 year old girl has never had a menstrual period. So that's primary amenorrhea. Physical exam shows a normal female body habitus normal breast development and normal appearing external genitalia she has no axillary or pubic hair this is the key word and the patient refuses to have pelvic or rectal examination this is the second key word so you can see here that the presentation of androgen insensitivity syndrome will come as a girl with primary amenorrhea and it will not come as a male and so that's the confusing thing about it i'm going to show you exactly how to break this down so the key to recognizing questions like this is to understand uh, sexual differentiation uh, i need you to separate chromosomes from gonads from genitalia consider each of these separately so the sex chromosomes the X and Y determine the gonads. So if this person has a Y chromosome, the person with androgen insensitivity syndrome has a Y chromosome, then they will have testes. And that is why this patient refused to have pelvic or rectal examination because they have an undescended testes that we can palpate in their pelvis. And if this person has testes, then they must have Sertoli cells, which secrete Mullerian inhibitory factor to block internal female genital development. So they do not have a uterus, they do not have fallopian tubes, which is why this patient presents with primary amenorrhea. Now, because they have testes, they will also have lytic cells that produce testosterone. However, in utero, uh, this testosterone should uh, should lead to male genital development but because there is insensitivity it's called androgen insensitivity the tissues are not responsive to the effect of testosterone in utero this person will not develop neither external nor internal male genitalia and so where is all this testosterone going to go it's going to be aromatized to estrogen peripherally and all this estrogen would go on to cause normal breast development this estrogen in utero will also go on to cause external female genital development and so this person will appear like a normal female however because there's also no response to androgens in general this person will not have axillary or pubic hair and so this is how this patient would look like since they are an xy male they will have testes but the testes will be undescended uh, these testes will be producing testosterone, which will go on to uh, be aromatized to estrogen, causing breast development. But because there is no end tissue response, then there is going to be no axillary or pubic hair. There is no end tissue response in utero. Then there is going to be no external male genitalia. And again, because they have Sertoli cells, which have produced malaria inhibitory factor that blocks internal female genital development so they do not have a uterus another way these questions can ask you is uh, about the levels of testosterone and LH now much like the end tissues are irresponsive or insensitive to androgens so is the anterior pituitary the anterior pituitary thinks that there is not a lot of testosterone around simply because it also has an androgen receptor defect and so because it is insensitive to androgens it keeps on producing LH keeps on producing LH as if there is no negative feedback and so the testes will respond and they are functional and they keep on producing testosterone and so you have a lot of testosterone and you have a lot of LH on serum studies